Hello and welcome back to the Chris Chan Weekly Update, the only weekly show where I haven't made a video in over a month. And when I logged back on YouTube, I found out that I had 440 messages. So, that's cool. Let's start with Chris's Twitter. This is inspiring. I've been hit time and time again by another hater or random troll, even some demon type or someone super tough like Ray writes, but I don't give up these days. I know what I fight for on myself, and for my people, family, friends, allies, and all innocent. Also, I never traced anything, so stop saying that I do. So uh, immediately after saying he doesn't trace anything, he says, <clears throat> I will tell you all one more thing. To redraw and rewrite from another person's style on top of my own has been very educating for my muscle memory. Example, my own style is shaping up an improvement. The arm lengths are more consistent, and the expressions are improved. And I will keep fighting and defending myself and others from trolling and hater attacks and... So, y'all can back off now. I keep fighting and bleeding love. And I have given lots of gratitude to Tricky, I'm going to assume that that's the person who drew this, and her drawing and writing style in Rose Chew's story. It definitely compares and contrasts to my own that goes beyond literal small talk. In my defense on heavy dialogue, I have lots of wisdom and thoughts to share, so I digress. It beats one line, leaving it at that, and not getting the explanation and thought across. Big difference between hashtag Teen Titans and hashtag Teen Titans Go. Go has decreased explanatory dialogue, and look at how bad it is. I'm just going to bleep that. I don't know why I changed the word. The original show offers the greater detail in good ways. So Chris is defending the fact that in his comic, he puts literal walls and pages of text by saying that they talked more in the original Teen Titans. Uh, okay. So uh, this is a little tangent, but the way I actually found Chris Chan was reading a comic called Tales Gets Trolled, which is mostly a parody of Sonic Chu. And so in order to parody Chris's writing style, there is this magnificent, uh, like, page-long paragraph spoken by Kermit the Frog that's on screen right now. And it's it's beautiful because the whole paragraph is about patience and waiting to actually, like, advance to the next level in something, which also mirrors what the reader is going through as they have to read this long paragraph that's basically about nothing in order to get to more plot developments. And, like, that is really good writing, and I cannot recommend Tales Gets Trolled more. But I just, I have to think about that when Chris tries to defend his, uh, his style of storytelling. Oh, here we go. This is the, uh, this is the Quickville Gym Badge. So if you're in Unova and you want the Quickville Gym Badge, this is what it looks like. It's obviously a lightning bolt, and we have spikes, because Sonic has spiky hair, and it's purple. It's probably a psychic gym, or maybe Magichan runs it or something. I don't know. I haven't read the last couple Sonichu issues. I've been, I've been trying to make a Sonichu episode of The Absurd since February, but it's freaking long. And it's painful to get through. Such a pin badge would be no bigger than any other badge. It should be in length and width to... Bl oh, wait, is he saying that he wants people at BronyCon to make this? Yeah, I'd love to see some pins that actually look like this at BronyCon. He wants people to make merchandise for him, of course. Uh, of course, made of the typical pin metal and painted very well as such. If some can be made in a week for BronyCon by someone going there, I'd pay for... I'd pay them for one. Show me your best, please. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen. Okay, let's see what Chris Chan just retweeted. Another reminder for those going to BronyCon. You have to shower. <laughs> no, you. You have a shower. Use it. Drink water all day. Use deodorant. Deodorant is not a substitute for a shower. Cough, cough, Chris. No matter how late you wake up, shower first. And Chris felt the need to retweet this. <laughs> Keeping in mind that he once wrote an advertisement because he used to make ads inside Sonichu issues because that's what happens in real comic books uh, where Sonichu used Axe body spray and he's like, this replaces a normal shower because as we all know, Chris doesn't shower often. Uh, there's a BronyCon announcement. I think we can watch this. Yeah, it's short. Okay. Hello, everybody. Chris Hello. Chandler coming to you live from home once again, and yes, I'm yeah, I'm going to BronyCon this weekend from the August from August first to the fourth, all four days, getting there on Thursday morning and so forth. 
but let's be real, all right? I mean, I'm not going to be welcoming of hatred or malcontent, and you're going to get reported to security by me personally if you do anything bad. And I'm not going to do anything bad, so don't make any stupid false stories about me or shit or try to set me up even. That's plain stupid. So I think this is in reference to the last convention he went to in which he was kicked out because whenever a fan asked to take a picture of him, he would occasionally, uh, like, as the picture was being taken, he would turn and kiss them on the cheek, and someone got really upset by this, so they told security, and security threw him out. So that's what he's talking about when he says, uh, don't make up stories about me to get me kicked out, even though no one made up that story because we know what happened. Anyway, you know me better. I'm, I'm more pleasant, I'm more kind, I'm more honest and sincere and everything. <clears throat> so please remember that. Approach me kindly and it's all good. Approach me badly and... Are you going to stare at me like that? Because that's terrifying. Anyway. What? <laughs> hope to see okay. all the good people at BronyCon. Be respectful. Be kind. Be positive to each other. Okay. Hey, BronyCon, I am on my way. Oh, is this his, um, he said he was going to cosplay as something related to Suicune that was not Suicune, but he would not tell us what it is. Uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe, I think, I thought that was the, uh, the goddess logo. I'm not sure. Wild, wild fans are recognizing. We have arrived. And he's still not, uh, cosplaying as anything that I can tell. So Chris just uh, posted a couple pictures of himself at BronyCon, like meeting celebrities and stuff. And uh, this this is the only one that jumps out to me. He says, I just destroyed an Anon of 4chan, or whatever, smiley face. Uh, I guess that's what this guy is supposed to be, because he has a green face, and that's kind of what Anon looks like. I don't know. I don't really know what Chris means. If you know what Chris means, uh, you can put that in the comments. I must have been recognized and approached by well over 200 awesome and kind individuals. I just want to tell y'all that it really touches and humbles me to see more and more sincere kindness and appreciation from everyone. I feel better understood and supported. Thank you all. Why isn't Twilight Sparkle in this picture, huh? Huh? Where is she? I really appreciate how a lot of you are maturing into better individuals. We've come a very long way from late 2007. I've developed my own way of taking the mixed results and seeing the true and positive intentions from them. To borrow from Key, for every word or phrase that is similar or like, you suck, it actually means, I care about you, and I just wanted to say something. I'd still rather not read the worst phrases at the risk of triggering me. Again, thank you all for your sincerity and kindness to and for me, as well as to and for each other amongst yourselves. I'll describe my weekend events after getting some rest. Being very cautious not to tag anyone or reveal any spoilers. Spoilers about your trip to a con? Because I know the consequences all too well, and I'd rather be respectful and courteous, as well as not get in trouble from from gross misconducts of indirect you sucks aimed at me, but pointed at someone else who may likely misunderstand from the present or lack of context. I'm sure that that makes sense. In his mind. Okay, I digressed enough. End on a positive note. I love you all. And all... You all do not suck. Y'all are awesome in my eyes. Thank you all. Also, final thought for now. I promise. I feel content in being able to show the kind individual that I am. And touch thousands of lives by sharing a moment. Or just being there in their view for even a glance. And my kind action and aura have been witnessed and become known. You do know that you've only approached you for your meme novelty. Like trying to get a selfie with Bigfoot. <laughs> that's great. No, because that's that's the truth. And people people go up to him, people want to get pictures of him because he's a meme and it just feeds into his delusions. And I don't think that there's a good solution to that. Like, I don't even know if I would do anything different if I ever met him. But it's it definitely is a problem. Oh, what's this? Never judge someone because you heard about them. Two, this is the wrong form of two. Too many jealous out there talking 
to get to know themselves yourself before you whatever i don't know who this chris kink guy is uh life isn't worth living unless i'm naked okay that tells me most that i need oh my god what is this i started a new campaign and this time it's what why is he oh yeah so uh sockness that's a different okay what oh god okay okay yeah i'm not okay whoops shouldn't have clicked on that Oof. this is my philosophy when dealing with people it turns out i was totally right about chris chan being a true friend all her trolls and haters are being blocked out i'm only seeing the light going forward now the darkness is being shut out man these people there are these there are some crazy people following chris and like it's it's weird because it used to be that all the people following chris were only doing it for the meme or only doing it because they were trolls but no he is actual true believers now like this guy in Sockness, and I, I'm going to do a video on Sockness because he is crazy, and if you already know about him, uh, you know why he's crazy, and if you don't, then you are in for a big surprise. Also, I'm fairly certain there's a Dylan Thomas video about him, so you can just watch that now as you wait, but uh, he he's, he's insane. Fortunately, I just need to start from the beginning and refer to the schedule I had crafted on my phone beforehand as for a refresher, and my photographic memory remains awesome as ever. So, in order to tell a story, all he needs is to refresh his memory by looking at his phone, and also his photographic memory, because those two things don't contradict themselves at all. I will type up the full story on a doc file and put it on Google Docs, especially since I have that app now, and it works, and I'll tweet a link and some highlights of the weekend. Aside from that, I will go ahead and mention last year I had ordered from Lulu a bunch of copies of My Sonichu 12 through 9 featuring Nightstar, the special plus editions with the song part from Book 12. They got delivered to me well after last year's BronyCon. Mishaps in delivery. Point is, I had a bunch of copies of this book, and I decided to share them with those faded, selected few who left quite an impression on me, including these people from whom I had brought their respective books. I love to read what I don't care. So these are people who he likes and he gave them his copies of his books. But I digress. The books I have were shared out of the faded feeling that I roll with and with and was delighted to. And now, with a piece of lovely quartz, Lauren Faust has a copy of Oh he gave a sonnet shoe book to Lauren Faust. Oh my god. <laughs> She's the creator of uh, Friendship is Magic, and I think her husband made Fosters and a couple other things like that, like Fosters and uh, Powerpuff Girls. So she, she's like, she's famous and like a big person in the animation community, and now she has a copy of Sonichu, and that's amazing. I asked her about G1 Megan and the symbolance relationship between Equestrians, Ponyville residents, and humans and human types. Find out the recorded answer in a recorded video from that panel's Q&A that will be uploaded onto YouTube later on. He asked a question at their panel. That's beautiful. Point is, the books were not initially for sale, nor intended to be money makers during the convention. But I have a connection to the set of traveling artists who are in the vendor hall, who I will look into working with to help distribute my books and Sonichu Rose Chu merch. So yeah, prolific, eventful, awesome weekend. Magic Chan, Krizel, Savannah, and I... Also enjoyed, honorable mention goes to Best Hippogriff of the Fandom. Thank you, Silver, for your kindness. Just a reminder to those who might be inclined to, please, please, please do not bother pester or contact anyone I mentioned out of all this about anything having to do with me. They have their lives and good works too. Thank you all. Have a great and safe day. Yeah, top comment. If you have a photographic memory, why do you have to refer to your phones? Exactly, it's amazing. Now you have photographic memory? Is that a new goddess power? I've always had a photographic memory, all of my life. This is not new at all. <laughs> Congratulations on not kissing anyone. That's great. Oh, man, I really want to watch this. Uh, do I? Am I going to have to sit through a BronyCon panel just to see Christian watch, ask a question? Hopefully someone clipped it and I can find it somewhere else. Retweet this if you're going to be a Brony or sister for life, even when G4 ends. So G4 is Friendship is Magic, and that's going to end soon. But Chris is convinced that it's not because uh, he has a vision from the other dimension that it's not going to. So his response is, ditto. That's not what ditto means. But G4 is not ending. It still has five more seasons to go. Season 14 is its cap, which is just not the case. And uh, he's going to throw some giant fit when uh, the show actually ends. Okay, the following I will only say and type one time, so listen up, everyone. I had a rough outing today, and on the way home, after starting the van, I'm whammed in the face with a sulfuric odor. Ugh. 
Silvana and I confirm that there is now something wrong with the air conditioner, so we will have it checked at the local auto repair soon. Also, while hardly any noticeable damage has occurred, I hit- Oh, I remember this. Okay, so, uh, basically, when I'm not making my videos, I try to avoid Chris's Twitter because I want to go into all of this with, like, fresh eyes and not know what's coming next. But I heard about this when it happened because my- all the people in my Discord were like, Hey guys, Chris hit a- hit a- hit a car. So now I finally get to find out what all this hubbub was about. Uh, I hit the bumper of a parked truck in a parking lot while I was thinking about the next stop in our set of errands. I promised my mother pizza, so rather than risk my life with the van... What? Risk it... This, Chris, you can just turn the air conditioner off. It's not going to kill you. I go onto my Papa John's app and order a pizza. Guess what happens? 20 minutes later, no delivery, and the tracker confirmed that the order was cancelled, and we had the cash to pay for it. So I try a second time. Five minutes later, cancelled. Then on the third time, I used my debit card and put a note on there that it really was me personally making the order. And I gave them my new phone number that time. They called me. And the manager of the local Papa John's where the order was placed, he informed me that there was no way that they were going to come to this 14 address to deliver ever again. Hangry, I felt like I needed to sort this out in person and face to face on a matter of principle. Oh, Chris is gonna drive to the store. This is gonna be just like when he uh, when he drove to the game place. I started to head out, and what happens next? Uh, whatever. I can't pronounce this. Uh, so county police car drives in. This was in response to the minor damage hit. There was no visible damage at all on the other vehicle. So earlier in the day, he had had a fender bender in a parking lot, and he, I guess he just drove away from the scene. So now the police are after him. And yet this happens, making for a whipped cream and cherry topper to the set of torture I had to endure. I told the guy what happened, and my mother, being more calm than I was able to be at the time, we sorted it out, gave him our insurance info, and he went on his way. But I vented loud and proud. And after the unrequited arrest and dog pilings I've had to endure from county police, I kicked his car five times. <laughs> <laughs> Chris kicked a police car because he because he was angry about being arrested in the past. He decided to kick a police car. That's that's great. And then he admitted it on the internet. Super super smart boy. Good job. I've always wanted to do damage back at them for years and it finally happened and it felt so karma level zen and good, but I digress. After the cop left, I made my way to Papa John's and told him, who's him, is him Papa? Papa John? And I told him about my day and being hangry. So <laughs> imagine being the Papa John's manager and Chris Chan with his crystals and his Sonichi medallion walks in and he's talking about having just picked, <laughs> having just kicked a police car and how hangry he is. <laughs> he showed me something revolutionary. Page after page of calls and orders from people pretending to be my old phone number and my home address, and all of them voided. I risked my life in the van. Again, Chris, if you just turn off the air conditioning, the fumes are not going to get to you. I risked my life in the van at this point going out. But do you all know what this means? This 14 address has been food blacklisted because of you bored pranking trolls and haters. I can only imagine and theorize how far this goes. I'll even bet that no matter from who or where I order from, even if I paid personally and in full, no food will be delivered here ever again. Even in times when I don't have an available vehicle at all, or even able to use Uber, which, by the way, they suck, their app sucks, it does not work for me. You haters may laugh at yourselves now, but you will all be laughing out the other side of your face. What does that mean? When fate, destiny, and karma smacks you hard and rough. Even possible. I'll have a tangible lightning bolt in my hand, and we'll see if you survive being paralyzed or worse. But again, I digress. Despite what has happened, I actually feel like things are coming full circle. I feel successful. I feel like I was well heard and listened to. Oh, bonus. People saw Silvana roast you and Krizel roast you. What? Fully visible and tangible by my side today. Oh, I can't wait to see where this goes. And the fact that we'll never ever receive any prank order pizzas here again. Yep, I feel successful. He's not going to talk about people seeing roast shoes. That sucks. As for you prankster and hater lots, I hope you feel proud of yourselves. 
I could be without a vehicle, and no food will be delivered here. Oh no, you have to live without food being delivered to your house. That's all terrible. Just go to the grocery store, Chris. Thanks to you lot, you cruel, dirty scum. Deep breaths, calm mind, and meditate. This is all I will say. I feel like I got a lot of stress today. I got out a lot of stress today. Thank you. I forgot to mention, I got the pizza that my card paid in full for, and I got back home safe with the van. I'll be contacting the local auto as early as tomorrow. <laughs> Top comment. Did you just admit that you attacked a police car? You're going to get arrested again. That is amazing. This is one of my favorite stories that I've ever covered in this series. Oh my god, like I love the dimensional emerge stuff, but Chris kicking a police car, that's that's truly beautiful. Okay, so now he's gonna be talking about Sonic Chu a bit more. We're currently on August 6th, and I have to go all the way up to August 26th, so uh, this, this video might be really long. I am getting started on writing about what happened last weekend. It is going to be part of Sonic Chu 14 as actual magic and psychic events have been personally experienced and witnessed, as well as witnessed by other people of this world. The merge continues. This is real. A uh, friendly reminder that the merge started on January 1st, apparently, and uh, it's continuing, even though nothing else has happened. Oh, I wonder how long until he blames the Amazon rainforest fires for the merge. Meanwhile, this will take me quite a while to handwrite, and a small featured item to draw on each page, so, for now, I'll share and talk a bit about the swag I was able to get. Oh, Ronicon swag. Please do not pester the people I will be mentioning here about me, or with any hatred in general. I do not want to be responsible for any inadvertent disturbances and offenses that come about from any of that. Autographs and share movement. Movements. <laughs> Mo <laughs> movement. Moments. Jesus Christ. Uh, all these people. Uh, I did not get the Dr. Wolf art until later, and he wasn't around to sign it. So, okay, so he did not meet Dr. Wolf. That would have been an interesting development, because he wants to be in a Dr. Wolf video. Uh, Mementos. The now-dried flower between plastic and shipping tape was a lovely purple flower that this person had put in her hair during the Patreon party with her and that guy. It was a really lovely and awesome party. Oh my god, I don't care. I really do not care. He got a pin. Oh, he got some more stuff. Oh god, oh no, this is not going to end well. How the Magic of the Gathering color wheel explains humanity. <laughs> Move over Myers-Briggs, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm still looking for the color quiz, etc. Okay, so Chris has just discovered Magic the Gathering, and uh, I, he's probably going to take a personality test to see which color he would be, and then he'll extrapolate some sort of something from that. And I cannot wait to see what this is. Uh, ex okay. For now, okay, wait, what color are you? Which Magic the Gathering color are you? Results 92% white. Uh, I don't believe that at all. Although I don't think that Chris actually embodies any color. Maybe red, because red is sort of chaos and lawlessness. But he probably wouldn't see himself as that, even though everyone else would. Oh, 36% blue. That's probably because he thinks he has psychic powers and he answered the questions like that. White players lay down the law. Their magic is all about building up defenses and then flooding the enemy, while at the same time stopping them from doing anything. You protect the innocent, but can be harsh on the cruel. At your best, you are benevolent and caring. At your worst, you are soft and underwhelming. I mean, again, these personality quizzes can uh, describe anyone, so, you know, that's not good. 1% green. Seems like, sounds like my... 0.1% Ashkenazi Jewish from 23andMe. What? <laughs> Why does he think green means Jewish? <laughs> green is about, like, large beasts and mana ramp. What's that have to do with being Jewish? What? <laughs> Chris, I don't understand. Here y'all go. Male or female, I saw you and Rose Juice still get their respective colors. Male Rose Juice get running shorts... And they look so manly like that. And female Sonic Chews look so kawaii as they do. So uh, a male Rose Chew... Wait. No, a female Sonic Chew... These are so confusing. A female Sonic Chew is still yellow and a male Rose Chew is still pink. Okay. I, I guess that... Aw, uh, finish these pages... Aw, uh, finish these pages about BronyCon weekend. There was sincere and good magic and psychic powers over the weekend. And I am content that I was alone in feeling... I, I am content that I was alone in feeling, experiencing, and witnessing all of it? Wouldn't he think that more people witnessed it? I don't know. More good signs of the Dimension merge happening. P.S. 
in faded consultation and discussions, it might be more of a dimension evolution. Oh, elevation. Wow. But considering the details previously stated, merge will be the term while ele- well well I don't know why I have such a hard time saying elevation. While elevation is more accurate. More on why later. Is there more? No, maybe he'll say it later. Okay, so our dimension's gonna be elevated. Anyway, keep the faith and believe the magics, whatever. Oh god, oh no, 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 no. Look at who came into my life now. Its name is Posey. He got another cat. Oh no. Oh no, it literally, look at his eyes. It looks like that sad cat eyes meme. Oh, that's not good. Just checked. It's a girl. Posey came from a litter from one of the cats in our yard, and she wandered inside today while my mother was washing the dogs. So he just kidnapped a dog, or a cat. He just stole this cat from its mother because it happened to wander 10 feet into his house. Christine, I mean this in the most generous way. Did you kidnap that cat? <laughs> no, I did not kidnap any cats or any animals of any kind. That sounds like something that a cat kidnapper would say. Oh, this is terrible. This is the worst. I don't understand why... Like, I can't, can't we find some sort of organization, like not, not PETA, like a good organization, that can take his animals away? Because he clearly cannot take care of them. Okay, so yet another brony community predator, Grizzly the Medic. So it looks like this guy's a pedo. And Chris says, hashtag between, hashtag fairy joker, and hashtag Leo Convoy. I have just been made aware of another sexual predator loose in the brony community. What's worse, I remember being approached by this Grizzly the Medic at BronyCon last weekend. It was rather short, but he recognized me, talked with me for a moment. I believe he took a selfie with me. I remember he telling me, then... I remember he telling me then that he was in cosplay while wearing the BronyCon security t-shirt and khakis, as photographed in the above video, next to a white anon. So this guy was quote-unquote cosplaying as someone who worked in security at the convention. I'm pretty sure that that's at least against the rules, if not illegal. I am recalling more details. I was standing in line for one of the events in the Hall of the Sun, photographic memory serving me. I believe he approached me while I was sitting in line for the Brony Fandom History panel. I remember because I was sat at the nearby corner going into the nearby hallway, and the viewpoint outward from there was the background I remember seeing behind him. Dialogue-wise, recalling, I believe he said along the lines of, Oh my god, are you Chris Chan? I am such a huge fan of yours. Are you having a good time at the convention? Check out my cosplay. I'm a security team member. I might have responded, Shouldn't you be at work right now? Any event... I did sense and feel a bad vibe from him, of course you did, like he had creeped out a bunch of people before finding me. Mildly creeped, but I was moreover a combination of satisfied and content from the really good day I had, especially after the Grand Galloping Gala. Bit tired, but had a backup monster energy drink around 5pm that day, so I had energy to do as I did and keep better focus. Magichan, Krizel, and Silvana were with me in line at the encounter with Ka I thought Magichan could read minds. Why can't Magichan have read this guy's mind, found out he was a pedo, and told Chris? Could it possibly be because Magichan doesn't exist? Probably. Along with all the other people in line, an MLP Silver Quill was also nearby, but not in line. He was on his way back to his hotel with his posse. Anyway, everyone, let's be aware of this pedo predator in the brony community. And, at BronyCon, I would have felt better if there was a strict policy against people cosplaying as security types. Yeah, that, that, that just kind of makes sense. I don't know why that wouldn't already be against the rules. Uh, with or without an actual official badge. I feel like this can be taken for example and memorized for future references with events like BabsCon, Trot... I don't know if these are too many games, I know that one. Oh, that's the one he got kicked out of for kissing people. Uh, exercise great conscious... Caution, no matter where you go at conventions, have fun for yourselves. But more importantly, be safe and be well. Stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's relevant to not being molested. Eat two big meals per day, shower once per day, or more, you know. And get at least six hours of sleep rest. Sorry, Grizzly the Medic, but I gotta step in and warn everyone about you too. Why are you apologizing to the pedo? 
it's just, it's just such, such a crisp way of responding to, uh, you know, this event. Okay, so this guy's talking about the pedo. He says, I'm so frustrated that we still keep on finding out these kinds of people are in the Brony fandom. When will it stop? And Chris said, people are people, and everyone has their own respective flaws and quirks, good or bad. <laughs> All we can do in this for protecting the future generations and the children is as we have done today. Get the evidence and point them out and be safe for ourselves and everyone. Yeah, you know, just being a pedo, that's just uh, respective flaws and quirks. And then this tweet's unavailable, so whatever Chris said here doesn't really matter. Actually, this does bring up an interesting point. This dude was 20, practically fresh out of high school. Now, I am not by any means standing up or, or defending Grizzly, but think about it. You're in high school, senior year. You've just turned 18 years old. But before then, it was okay for you to date a hot 15-year-old. <laughs> okay, Chris. As you had been doing for a few months beforehand. Now he, she is super off-limits. You turn 18. Regardless of gender or gender identity, everyone begins looking at you as an adult. You are factually case... You are factual case point... Oh, there are factual case points where mentally you are still a teenager. Not yet fully into adulthood until 21. It's actually 25. Where that mindset is where everyone puts you at when you turn 18. I emphasize the transition from going from dating almost anybody within your... Okay, so before he continues, I think what he's trying to say is that if you're 17 and you're dating a 15-year-old, it's okay. But the moment you turn 18, it's not okay. But that's actually not the case because a lot of states have laws where if you're within a couple years of each other, it's still okay, at least legally. So, but I think that this is what he's trying to say. Uh, not counting the faculty. I emphasize with the transition of going from dating almost anyone within your classroom range, not counting the faculty, to where you may as well be having a difficult time finding your new sweetheart soulmate. Yeah, your new soulmate. That that makes sense. I never got to date or experiment. Yeah, we know, Chris. Uh, like that with anyone during my high school years. I still wish they'd offered a dating education class. Uh, but in this later age, I can emphasize and compare with those I had witnessed from others around me back then in person, as well as what was heard of in televised media. It makes one feel like in these states there should be a grace period from— Yeah, there literally is, Chris. There's quite literally— They're called Romeo and Juliet laws. That literally exists. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pondering it further, this suppression that got instilled upon us at the numbered— age date and those of us who missed out on being amongst the popular ones who honestly were able to brag about i made out with jeremy under the bleachers during the big game against milwaukee that is so specific why 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 chris that are you... <laughs> okay um doing things in efforts of fitting in and finding your place in the social hierarchy what is he even on about at this point that was limited within the high school walls and zones which are all, which all are superior, bogus to everyone, feeling like you needed to have sex before turning 18. Or some local talk like that, just to feel popular like the hip crowd there or some sigh. It's with a few people who feel so deeply missing out of these things from their respective past that they feel needlessly urged to make up for lost time by rocking the teenage cradle or something. Frustrating? Yes, just frustrating to ever. I don't understand his point. Again, I'm not standing up defending or even remotely condoning what these pedophiles have done. I'm just offering empathized perspectives that put forth a few points on how they can come to be flawed in this way. Also realizing and taking into account the possibility of local family history, what, that might have scarred them for life that hit them later on and similar. These situations can be prevented to help those individuals find solace and ease into taking on their new age-restricted norm they are forced to endure upon turning 18 which does not exist. Because when you think about it, we all wish we got a chance to do what we wanted before hitting the big 1-8. The age consent system on that is not perfect. First of all, the age of consent in most states is 16. Also, we have laws about this anyway. So, <laughs> you like 15-year-olds, don't you, Christian? So, I mean, I don't know anything about this grizzly guy, but if... I'm not going to say if all he did was hit on a 15-year-old, because that would be wrong, but... I'm assuming that's not what he actually did, which means that Chris, def quote unquote, defending him in this way makes absolutely no sense. Oh, here we are. Here's some here's some uh, tweets from Magichan. Let's try to guess whether Chris wrote them or someone else wrote them for him. Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's all randomly capitalized, which means Chris probably did write them. As you all are aware, I'm doing what I'm able to in restoring as much peace and mind as possible with Christine. 
A detail that I was aware of has come to my attention. I shall explain. It appears that the analyst who had blocked Christine had concern over a misunderstanding and interpretation of what she had tweeted as early as August 2018, and of course the hater commentary encouraging these misinterpretations. Hey, I didn't have a channel. I wasn't covering Chris back then, so I can't be one of those hater commentators. Oh, I just rhymed by accident. The misinterpretations had led to the assumption of malicious intent, and that was never ever the case with Christine. He's using a lot of big words here that actually I don't know if Chris could use properly, so I'm actually starting to wonder if this is Chris writing this or not. I have looked on her old Twitter. It ends at September 11, 2018, so I checked on the quickie. They chronicle as much as possible from Christine's online details, that's correct. From my recollection, the likelihood of which I would vouch that her rants and emotions from after being blocked the first time would have been misconstrued to appear malicious when it was never the case. In C-197, the ac in the actual coal town of Equestria, I had personally talked with Dr. Wolf and Firebrand in November of 2018 to allow Christine, her projected self, to participate temporarily as the Red Spy until when the chronicled Red Spy-to-be, British Ninja, became revealed. The following April, Christine had trained hard in the art of stealth and combat, while limiting her power so she doesn't easily overpower the others. It made for fun boss mode days, her in her CPU form against everyone else in their alt forms. Christine drew a little inspira drew a little something to celebrate this, while also having tweeted of some of her accomplishments there and then. She took artist liberty, liberty and taking into account the respawn generator there of making her lightning dagger look like it took out someone on the field. Okay. This was never meant to convey any malicious intent for real at any time off of the battlefield in Coltown, nor during times outside of the scheduled missions and battles on the field. Christine is an energetic, enthusiastic, kind and loyal individual to a fault. She has apologized to the analyst before, but in light of this, a new apology directly from her is indeed required. I shall talk with her after she returns from Quickville later today. As much as I abhor advertising the quickie, I do encourage the analysts to read the past of Christine's tweets from as early as August 2018 for themselves to reevaluate their past assumptions. That is all, thank you. Yeah, I don't... I'm... I don't actually know if Chris wrote those or not. I feel like it would have been worded more confusatorily, which is not a word. So, hmm, that's, that's interesting, because the mystery of who's actually writing those tweets is still a mystery. So uh, we're back to Chris now. Hey everyone, I had another awesome day in Quickville. My physical training with my body has greatly improved. I'm getting more stronger, <laughs> more stronger, and mentally able every moment. Woo, what a rush. Anyway, Magic Chan has brought to my attention that there was, indeed, a misunderstanding that was behind some of those few analysts who had blocked me months ago. Cutting to the chase. So yeah, the likes of Lightning Bliss, Mad Munchkin, possibly even Jasper Pie. I don't know why he's hashtagging them instead of adding them if he actually wants them to read this. Uh, they all feared me. <laughs> they were afraid I was going to have some sort of murderous or malicious intent or mindset in their direction, and I realized that also could be misunderstood from the drawing I made of myself in my Sanju form on active red spy duty while I was on the actual team in Coltown with Dr. Wolf and others. So Chris is saying that he now believes that the reason that the brony analysts all blocked him on Twitter is because he drew a picture of himself hitting one of them with a lightning dagger when he was pretending to be in... Quickville playing a game of Team Fortress with them as Sonichu, which is just not the case. So now he's apologizing for something which is simply does not reflect reality. When I drew that, I had absolutely no malicious intent in mind at all. The only thing on my mind at the time was being happy to be part of their team, for real, and I was feeling so excited and all fired up, and all that. And yes, the respawn generator works there. I, I'm assuming that means that if you die, then you just respawn, so him killing someone isn't bad? I'm guessing that's what that means. So I got to work on my stealth movements and tactics with no long-term casualties, and a good teamwork and combat fun. But, I digress. To reiterate, initially and fully, I have no conscious or subconscious intention on harming, hurting, or anything malicious upon anyone. I would never have any intentions of hurting people that I like, people who are innocent and kind, people who have families. So he just went from, I would never have any subconscious intentions of harming anyone, to he would never hurt people who are innocent or and kind. And uh, you can just uh, go back and look up your favorite videos of Chris ripping up pictures and throwing darts at uh, like Clyde Cash and Liquid Chris and stuff like that. I'm like most of y'all who feel the same way as well as in saving the combat work for self-defense and taking out those who have caused bunches of hurt on me or anyone else. 
innocenter kind and those I care about. I have a heart. Anyhow, to all these people and anyone else who had this as part of the reasons and blocking me about a year or so ago. Keep in mind that uh, the reason that Chris made this new Twitter account is because he was blocked by all those people and he basically wanted to be unblocked by them, so he just made a new account. That's why uh, this whole thing happened. I deeply apologize for anything and everything that I have said and done before that made y'all feel like seeing me as of malicious intent or the like. That is not me at all, and I was able to show that to some of y'all over BronyCon weekend. I will not repeat myself on the matter ever again, and I promise not to be all spammy and annoyance or whatever. I only pray that you all take my more recent actions, my own tweets and comments, separate from the online haters and bullies, and what else in general. I pray you all at least consider and reevaluate and unblock me on Twitter. All of you have such strong hearts, souls, and personalities, each of you. It truly is nothing but awe-inspiring in all directions. I like you all, as the good people that you are, and I am a fan of your respective works and OCs. My intentions will always be good, will always be kind and good. My intentions will always be supportive. My heart and soul are in the right place, and all of my chakras are very much aligned. And I pray the next time we get the chance to meet up again at another pony convention or something, it will be on mutual good vibes and without any misconstrued fears of bad blood. I pray for y'all's health, safety, and being. Continue to do your best, all of you. Thank you. And now we're back at Magichan. Everyone, I have an announcement and this will likely shock a lot of you while making the haters want to feel like cheapening it to their own meaningless defense. Christine and I had literally switched bodies on the morning of August 14th, 2019, and I'm assuming here's a drawing of them switching bodies. In this semi-permanent phenomenon, I have been using her hands and body as my own, while she has been on the C-197 side of the curtain in my body, making great efforts on her part as well. Over the past few days, I've been sharing my wisdoms and insight and offering my views as I normally would, except I finally get to speak to all of you people of 1218's Earth. I have recorded a video and uploaded it with the same announcement and showing my charming personality in heavy highlight. In this example, this definitely proves without a doubt our, our ordeals are indeed fact between both dimensions. Thank you. Oh, there's a video! First recorded statement of Magician. Oh my god, okay, we're gonna watch this in a second. Yep, apparently the highest liked and talked about topic for today is our body switching day nearly a week ago. Such a phenomenon in real time event does make for a hot topic. Anyway, thank you all for your continued kindness and support. Christine's body is in good health, we are doing well, and I shall continue to bring out her better powers and abilities in great practice and meditative efforts. Aren't you Magichan? Shouldn't this tweet be written from Christine's point of view, since you guys swapped bodies? Magichan and I had literally swapped bodies is how it should read. I am indeed Magic Chan Sonichu. Christine's soul was transferred into my body on C197 side of the dimensional curtain. She was unable to interact fully with the objects of 1218 and thus unable to initially comment. She did temporarily possess these hands to tweet her apology. Oh, this guy follows me on Twitter. Um, hmm. Yeah, so if this account, if this is Magic Chan talking on Magic Chan's. Now I'm confused. If we're listening to Magichan talk, but they switched bodies, the Magichan should be on Chris's account. Also, this person should be talking in the third... I don't know. Let's just watch this. Okay, so uh, this is Magichan in Chris's body. So let's hear what Magichan has to say. Good day, everyone. It is I, Magichan Sonichu. I have taken possession of Christine's body. He's reading. As we have... His eyes keep moving from left to right. He's reading off something. Swapped bodies. Her soul is in my body, as you can see right behind me, on the opposite side of the dimension curtain. I am recording this today as definitely backed up by Christine's second phone. It's August the 15th. You don't need to prove that it's August the 15th today. You're recording it if you uploaded it on August 15th, so... Which, on that note, should be the day I have uploaded this video. Yes, exactly. Originally, long before I made it public. You could definitely tell that it is I versus, as opposed to Christine. Not only in the vocal tones, but also my behavioral patterns. He says before immediately doing something that Christian does when he uh, 
closes his eyes and looks like he has a headache. He also Imagine literally admitted that he only lowered his voice to sound different. Urge continues to progress. An event will happen very soon where my body fully comes into this 1218 dimension. And I will be swapped back with Christine. And everything will definitely further progress from there. It is quite different being in a human body as opposed to my science, your body. Especially in the brain. My brain works a lot better. This brain... Okay, if they swapped souls, but Magic Chan is currently in Chris's body, then first of all, his voice should not have changed, and also his brain wouldn't be acting any differently because he would have Chris's brain. So that doesn't make any sense. It needs work, but I am working on it. I am improving. Oh, he's gonna do magic trick? No, that's, wait, that's, a, that's like a fidget spit spinner or something, like fidget box, I forget what they're called. What, what is he doing? Is he doing? Is he doing a magic trick? Is he moving it psychically by tilting his hand and having gravity do the trick? Well, that aside anyway. What? I'm still working on it. <laughs> what did we just see? <laughs> oh man, oh man, I, I want Chris Chan to go on Penn and Teller Fool Us now. <laughs> she's got power. I'm helping her find it. And she's marrowing my power too. She'll be making the journey very soon to progress everything there is. We will all be able to see and coexist with each other very soon. At least at this point, my wisdom, intuition, other thoughts are able to be shared in this realm. So take that as you will. Be good. Be safe. Is there going to be a third thing? Be kind and take care of each other. Okay, there we go. Took him, a, took him a really long time to think of a third thing. You know, it's actually possible that this isn't Chris and it is actually Magichan because he didn't start the video by saying I'm coming live to you from home once again. So, you know what? I'm actually convinced now. I am presently binge listening to Gino's comprehensive history series on YouTube. I just finished part four. Oh my god, wait, is Chris watching Gino Samuel? That's awesome. It brought back a lot of recall to me. On Christine's behalf, I will retweet this onto her Twitter feed as well, just for the record and Megan's reference. Christine had watched Sailor Moon when it was on Toonami in the late 90s. She had enjoyed it from start to when Chibi Usa made her tea hosting friend viewed on the last, I don't care, uh, blah, blah, blah. Christine was a fan of My Little Pony G1 and 2 when they both were airing on Disney Channel in the late 80s and early 90s. She was unable to get the merchandise for either at the time, but she did enjoy the shows very much. In other words, Christine had enjoyed the media that she had started to that she had stated to Megan that she had enjoyed long before the two of them ever met. Period. The only thing that Christine picked up a new interest in from Megan was the Soul Pal Caliber and Tekken OC Yashimitsu. What was something? I don't know. Yoshi. And even then, despite his Robin Hood personality types, what Christine was mildly put off a bit from his appearance. That is all. Thank you. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh. When Chris started getting too close to Megan, she got pissed off because she thought that he was only becoming fans of the things that she was fans of, uh, in order to get, like, get close to her and, like, win over her approval and stuff. Because, obviously, she never had any intention of dating him. So she's like, oh, because she was basically, like, a hipster. You know, she's like, oh, I like Sailor Moon and I like My Little Pony, and now you only like those things because I did and I don't like that. So this tweet is, uh, Chris, like, 15 years too late coming out and saying, oh, actually, more than that, uh, coming out and saying, like, no, I liked all those things before I even met you. So, wait, am I at the top? Can I stop? Wow, that's incredible. Wait, so that means that Chris hasn't actually tweeted in a very long time. Yeah, it's been about 10 days. Chris has been stuck in Quickville for, like, 10 days. That's crazy. 
Um, okay, I guess that we're currently, at, at the time of me ending this video right now, we're in the middle of some sort of strange uh, time period where Chris and Magichan are still in swapped bodies, and we're only listening to Magichan talk. That's new and strange and interesting. And now I'm kind of extremely interested in what's going to happen in the next week. Uh, hopefully I'll actually be able to get a video out one week from today, although I kind of doubt that that will actually happen. Um, if you want more updates and are blocked by Chris, because I know a lot of people are blocked by Chris, um, there is an amazing user on my Discord who uh, takes screenshots of all of Chris's tweets, everything that's on his timeline, so that includes these Magichan tweets, uh, and he puts them on a special channel on my Discord. Uh, my Discord's free to use. I have a link to it in the description. You can just join uh, as long as you follow the rules. And you can keep up with Chris's tweets there. You can interact with people in my Discord there. You can talk to me. I'm actually on there quite a lot when I'm not working. Uh, and yeah, I'm just interested in seeing where this ends up going. Because this is... It's not, it's not necessarily a new development in terms of the dimensional merge, but it's definitely a new thing for Chris. And the fact that he's watching the Geno Samuel uh, documentary, that's also interesting. Because he could have he could give us new insight into all this information that like we've thought we've known for like 15 years or more than that even he could he could tell us that all of this uh this assumed knowledge that we've thought we had based on small like interviews and old stuff that he's done he could say like oh no that fact isn't entirely right and he could just give us new info on old stories that would be amazing i really hope he does that uh so i guess this video is over it's been like uh almost an hour i thought it would be longer uh, but thank you for watching once again. Please subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin. I don't usually retweet uh, Chris's stuff on there because I'm actually fairly certain he's blocked me. Uh, but I do talk about other stuff and you can talk to me on there. Um, and thank you for watching. Now I'm going to play 30 seconds of music because that's what YouTube wants you to do when you have links to other videos. So uh, goodbye, friends.